Welcome back to school everyone whether you are you know starting preschool, kindergarten, high school, college, or you're a teacher. Welcome back to school everyone who goes to school in some capacity. A couple weeks ago we did talk about how to live zero waste in a dorm so if you are a college student looking for specific dorm tips check out that video I'll leave it up here for you. This is literally for everyone whether you started your very first day of school ever today or you're starting your senior year of college today or you're a teacher or if you're a parent with school-aged children, this is literally for everyone who is involved with the school system in some capacity. So I have it broken down into students. We're gonna be talking about how to live zero waste at school for students, how to live zero waste at school for teachers and other administrators, and then how to live zero waste at school, sort of, as a parent or guardian. I'm a strong believer in that everyone can live zero waste, at least in some aspect, and that everybody can make change or be an activist, whether you're five years old or 65 years old. Everyone in between, older or younger. Everyone can be an activist and enact change in a positive way. And students, I promise you can use some of these to live more zero waste as well at school. This is a take on the old version I did 2020. So I'm really just making an updated version of the one of that one. Last year, I did do a video though on zero waste school and office supplies. If you want to check that out up here for specific supplies, these are just focused on tips. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. I'm really just working on making zero waste accessible for everyone, no matter your age, no matter your income, no matter where you live in the world. I think everybody can live zero waste in some aspect. Turning off the lights when you leave the room is living zero waste. Recycling is living zero waste. You don't have to spend a bunch of money. You don't have to use a bunch of your time to live zero waste. So that's what we're talking about today. A whole bunch of different age groups and people, no matter where you live, no matter what school you go to, you can live a little bit more low waste today. Let's first start with students. Students, it's very easy to to recycle at school. Um, even my school, you know, back in, I'm not sure, I think we probably did recycling when I was in elementary school. So like even 10, 20 years ago, we were recycling at school. Granted, it was only paper recycling, but because that's easily the most consumed item at schools, that's a great thing to recycle at schools. So if you have paper recycling students, please recycle instead of throwing that stuff away. Better yet, reuse. Do I have a piece of paper right here? Sure, this is a bad example. I got this like envelope in my <laughs> local newspaper and there's a blank side on it. I can use this blank side to take notes. So if you only use one side of your paper to take notes on, flip it over and take notes on the other side as well. Make sure also that you're recycling properly. This goes for teachers at school as well, but specifically students, make sure you're recycling properly. For example, my mom's a teacher. At her school, they could only accept whole sheets of paper, small sheets, big sheets, whatever it may be, but they don't do shredded paper. And I know that's very common as well. Back in my municipality in Las Vegas, they didn't take recycled shredded paper as well for recycling, only whole paper. Other rules are making sure that your soda cans are cleaned out, making sure that, you know, your yogurt containers are cleaned out and so forth. Several videos now on how to recycle properly. You can check them out up here. If your school doesn't already recycle, start a recycling program. I actually have a video now on how to start a recycling program. I didn't have that video when this video originally came out. You can check it out up here. I started a recycling program at my dorm in Texas when I was at my Air Force training. So I wasn't in school, but I mean, I was still in a dorm and I started a recycling program. I also started a recycling program at my office in Las Vegas because they didn't recycle either. And I go through all the ins, of, ins and outs of how to get bins, how to follow the rules, how to dispose of your recycling properly and so forth. So check that video out. My mom also started a recycling program for her school in Ohio. So we've done this all over the country. It's possible no matter where you live. The most important thing is to have designated bins, spread the rules far and wide so that everybody actually recycles properly and then get yourself a team together so that you can have help collecting and sorting everything properly. Next is to use supplies you already have. I know it's really, really popular to just go to the store every August and get new supplies for the school year. It's so much fun. Like that's easily one of my like most prominent memories in my childhood is going school supply shopping because it's so fun. But my mom also really encouraged us to use what we already had. We already had folders from the previous year that were still in good condition. We used them. If we had notebook paper left over, we would use that. Pencil cases, book covers, and so forth. If you already have stuff that's still in good shape. Continue to use that until it no longer functions. If you do have school supplies that you no longer use because you know you want the, the new version, you want the aesthetic version, that's fine. But I encourage you to donate your old supplies to a local thrift store or donate them to your school. Again, my mom does this really cool thing at her school where at the end of every school year, she goes around and collects half-used notebooks, pencils, pencil cases, folders, binders, all that sort of stuff, and saves them for next year for low-income kids who can't afford new school supplies. So again, if your school doesn't have something like that, you can start that program as well to keep all that stuff out of the landfill and help people get school supplies who can't normally afford it. You can also start a club for like-minded people. I'm just gonna keep throwing my mom into this video. Hey mom, good job. <laughs> 
she also started an eco club at her school for the students. So she, she leads it. She has the students. They do certain projects around the school. I know they started an Instagram account. So they like go around and tell people about climate facts and about recycling facts and all that stuff. Her students in her actual classroom are the ones that help her with the recycling. But these clubs are a great place to make like-minded friends, have a like-minded community, have people who understand what you're going through when it comes to climate anxiety, when it comes to wanting to save the planet, because you know, maybe your regular friends aren't into that. It's also a great place for you teachers to be a good example to your students on how to live a more eco-friendly lifestyle in and out of school. You could help teach people about recycling, you could host pep rallies, you could host school cleanups, or you can just sit around and talk about what you want to do for the climate in the future. Something I have seen a lot of schools do on the internet is have like a food take back program in the cafeteria. So for example, if someone gets a fruit cup and they don't open it and don't eat it, they can donate it to this old box where someone who either didn't get one wants extra food. Maybe they don't have food at home so they can take it home and have food when they go to home. It's just a great spot for people to prevent food with some going to the landfill and have someone else eat it who actually needs it or wants it. Also students, if you're feeling a little bit hesitant about starting any of these programs or clubs, get with a teacher that you trust and see if they can help you out. Especially if you are on like the younger end, if maybe you're in elementary or middle school, it might be helpful to have an adult help you out just to have the knowledge and the authority. But if you're in high school, maybe you don't need that. I mean, obviously you need to get some permission from someone, whether you have to go directly to the principal or whatever, but always ask for help if you need help starting any of these programs. Back to the cafeteria. If your school doesn't make you take one of everything at the cafeteria, don't take what you're not gonna eat. I think when I was in school, you had to take one of everything. You had to take a main, you had to take a side, you had to take a milk, ugh. you had to take, you know, one of everything. But half the time people are like, ugh, I don't wanna eat this chewy corn on the cob. I don't wanna drink this milk because I'm lactose intolerant or whatever. And then that would all go to waste. So if your school does not enforce you taking everything, Leave what you're not going to consume to prevent food waste that way. If you have the option, take the school bus or another form of tra public transportation to school if possible. I lived in a really rural area where pretty much everyone took the bus, um, but maybe you live in a more urban area and instead you can walk to school. You could also walk to school with friends to feel a little bit more safe or ride your bike. Those are some options, though if it's not safe for you to take to walk or anything or if it's too far for you to walk, but you also can't take the bus for whatever reason, try carpooling with your friends. We did this a lot growing up we had several friends of mine or even just people we knew that were going to school at the same time as us and say we didn't want to take the bus one day or we missed the bus we would carpool and work out so that only one per parent had to drive and this would save obviously gas and money I'm not sure what schools are up to these days in the the days of the days of digital technology but if your school offers online textbooks up for those instead or if they have like a used textbook now i know this is very common in high schools and, and middle schools they'll have the same textbooks year after year after year and just keep passing them down for 20 years or so so take advantage of that if that's a thing but if your school does online books definitely do online books because that can save a lot of waste you can host a zero waste assembly you could put together some material to educate your entire grade your entire you know your whole high school your whole middle school on a topic you're passionate about or you could just simply walk around to give presentations to each classroom like five minutes minutes during each period of the day about recycling properly, about climate change, about whatever topic you're passionate about. Another project that you might need a little bit of help from the teachers from is starting a community garden. I think this would be such a fun idea. It's actually such a fun project for your eco club to get involved in because this would definitely take a lot of effort from a lot of people to to enact. This is also great if you have like a, a home economics class or a cooking class, especially this is specifically for high school. I feel like you can use the stuff from the garden, which first off gardening is a great tool and skill to learn, but then you can use the stuff from the garden to learn how to cook another great skill to learn. And then of course you can take this even further and start composting as well. It would be really, really cool if you could compost for the entire school, like not just compost from the garden, but like compost stuff in the cafeteria. That would be really cool. Oh, another one that I thought of that was not in the last video is eco bricking. I have a full video on how to make eco bricks up here. This is again something that my mom does with her students and her eco club. She gets juice bottles on Facebook Marketplace. So she's helping her neighbors reduce waste sending to the landfill by getting free juice bottles. And then she takes a whole bunch of thin plastic from the school and puts them into eco bricks. And the goal, I think, is to use these eco bricks to create some sort of community garden compost situation or even just like a, a bench to sit on and raise awareness for plastic pollution and plastic waste. You could also create posters, double points if you use recycled or upcycled materials, and help spread the message this way. You don't have to necessarily go around and give lectures to people if you're an introvert or you don't have the time to do that, but making a simple poster, you know, hanging it up in the bathroom or in the hallway, just saying like, I don't know, advertising your new recycling program, advertising your eco club, reminding people to turn off the lights when they leave a room. 
again, whatever topic you're passionate about, you can make posters about that and hang them up. Always ask for permission. Don't wanna step on anybody's toes. We already talked about how most schools recycle paper in pretty much every classroom, but it would be really cool if schools also recycled in the cafeteria. This would be part of your recycling program. By setting up recycling bins in each classroom, you could also set up recycling bins in the cafeteria, encouraging people to recycle other things like plastic bottles and metal cans. And again, reminding them of the recycling rules so that it's easy for you to sort when it comes time to sort it. You could also start a petition about something you're passionate about. If you want your cafeteria to start recycling, if you want your cafeteria to not mandate people take one of everything, I don't know if you want to start the community garden that we were talking about, maybe your principal's like yeah I guess we could but I'm not sure if anybody would be interested in that you can start a petition and say like hey look I got a hundred signatures people a hundred people want to have a community garden I think we should make one and that's just a great way to start enacting change if the if your teachers or your principals need a little bit more concrete proof that your ideas are actually going to work you can start a petition sorry these are kind of all over the place but the next tip is to use google docs or a word document to take notes take digital notes basically instead of physical notes on a piece of paper if you're into that, I like physical notes personally, but this is a great way to reduce waste. Okay, seniors, this one's for you. When it comes to senior pranks, please pick something that's not wasteful. I'll give you some examples. Um, my senior class did a very wasteful senior prank and they copied the same prank that the seniors when we were juniors did. And it was to simply just create a mess in the whole school. Saran wrap stuff, balloons everywhere, streamers everywhere. It was a wasteful mess and it made me really, really upset. I didn't partake. Even back in that day, I was like, this is so wasteful. This is before I was even zero waste. But I believe it was this seniors my sophomore year their prank was very low maintenance very little waste what they did they just blocked off the parking lot with their cars and then had a pool party in the middle so like they had to bring like an inflatable pool and they probably had like some single-use drinks and a cooler or something but a lot less wasteful than what my class chose to do so if you're looking for a senior prank choose something that will have the least harm on the environment um and also not harm anybody in your school either all right teachers we're moving on to you as i already said students can do this too but teachers you can also join in on the fun. Save your students' school supplies from the year prior. If you have students who are like, yeah, I'm throwing out this half-used notebook, I'm throwing out this binder, throwing out whatever it may be, take that stuff and save it, especially as a teacher. You know school supplies will always come in handy in some form or another, whether it be a student who doesn't have money to afford it, or maybe you just need scrap paper to do activities on in your classroom. This can always come in handy. And of course, save stuff from the landfill. If you are in charge of hosting field trips, you could pick a field trip like that's environmentally themed. It could be something like going to a recycling facility, going to a community garden to tour that. You could tr um, find like a composting facility to tour. You could go to, you know, a state park or a national park and learn about conservation and recreation in that way. If you are a science teacher, there are so many ways you could talk about climate change. You could incorporate studies about it. Even art teachers, you could do like art projects about climate change. History teachers, you can talk about the history of climate activists, the history of climate change, the history of the environmental movement because come a long way. So those are some great ideas. You can encourage students to bring their own utensils, plates, cups and bowls, etc. in general to reduce waste in the cafeteria, but also like during like if you have a class pizza day or whatever it may be, encourage everybody to maybe bring their own plate. It sounds like a lot of work. You know, not everybody is going to be into it, but you can reduce a lot of waste and start a conversation. You could also team up with TerraCycle to recycle odds and ends in your classroom. TerraCycle has really like huge boxes that you can fill with hard to recycle things like highlighters, pens, pencils, glue, etc. And then you can send it back to them and they can recycle it. They are not cheap. So that's very unfortunate, especially because I know a lot of the times teachers do have to buy stuff out of their own pocket, which is really unfortunate. So if you can't manage this because it is pretty expensive, don't worry about it, but it's just an option. It might also be fun to encourage plastic free days in your classroom, maybe like the first of every month or even every Monday, if you really want to get into it that way, encourage students to bring, you know, their own reusable water bottle to avoid plastic in their lunches, bring plastic free snacks and so forth. If possible, avoid laminating. Laminating is literally just melting plastic on top of paper, rendering both non-recyclable. I know it definitely is important. I work in a state park now where we have to laminate a lot of stuff because it has to be weatherproof to be outside. If you need to laminate something, do it, but maybe just think before you laminate. Like, does this really need to be laminated? It's obviously not the worst because if it is something that needs to be kept for a long period of time, like a couple years, it will actually reduce the amount of stuff that you're printing. Pros and cons to that, but just think before you laminate. Something else you can do as teachers, we're bringing it back to school supplies is just encourage your students to use what they already have like when you're releasing the school supply list for the year say hey kids maybe look around your house and you know use your notebook from last year if there's still paper in it and so forth in the age of digital technology now again i made this video three years ago and i've been out of high school for six years so I'm not sure how far we've progressed in terms of digital notifications and stuff, but back when I was in school, we were also in a small town, 100% physical notifications, physical p permission slips, etc. So perhaps you could send emails to parents instead to sign permission slips that way. You could also send digital notifications to students about things. 
You can even start like a classroom newsletter that's sent via email instead of using paper to reduce a little bit of paper usage this way. If your school or rather your classroom has a lot of windows, try opening your windows during the brightest time of the day and reducing your reliance on electricity. This can also just be really fun to like soak in the natural light, even open the windows on a cool day instead of using the AC. Just a small way to live zero waste. I know a lot of people like to decorate their classrooms and I mean, I would too, it sounds like a lot of fun, but use your decorations over and over again until they're absolutely like outdated or just not functional anymore. You don't need a brand new theme every year because you are getting new students every year. They're not gonna know what theme you had the year prior. You can also teach students the importance of donating by going through all of your classroom stuff and donating it. Like if you have a bunch of old books, a bunch of old toys, like if you teach younger kids, you can teach them like, oh, we're going to be donating this stuff instead of throwing it away. Band teachers, this one's for you. If you have students who are like, I'm not interested in band anymore, maybe they're a senior and they're not going to be doing music after college, ask them to donate their instruments to the school to use for later so that again, people who don't have a lot of money can still participate in the music, music classes, as well as keeping this stuff out of the landfill, keeping it out of someone's attic and just rotting away. Instead of having like a wasteful end of the year celebration with like a water balloon fight or whatever it may be, host a community service event. And in my school did this. I think we were like the first school in Ohio to do this. It was literally just an entire day. The entire high school would get to go out and do community service projects and it was so much fun. My first year we did landscaping which was like all right. My last three years we were the crew that got stuck stuck. It was fun. It wasn't was it miserable. We were the crew that got put cleaning the fire trucks. That was so cool. And other people like read to preschoolers. People helped elderly people run their errands. People like painted stuff. There are so many options and we would just send out like newsletters to the local community saying like, hey, if you want students to come help you on this day, give us your project, give us how many people you need for it and we'll send someone out that day. And this was a great way to encourage everybody to remember the importance of community service, the importance of community and getting to know people in your community. And it was like super zero waste activity. It was so much fun too. If your school does a field day or something, you can brainstorm some low waste activities to do. Let's see. I know there's a game where like you can soak a sponge and see how much, see how little water runs out of the sponge when you squeeze it into a bucket or something like that. Like that one's very low waste. Like I'm talking wasteful things are like ones that involve not cracking an egg. That's food waste. Water balloon fights are clearly very wasteful. That stupid game where you wrap a bunch of cheap stuff from a, from like the dollar store in a ball of saran wrap. Avoid those wasteful games and brainstorm low waste options. We have a few tips for our caregivers out there as well. The first one is to pack low waste lunches for your students or also just encourage them to do it if they are capable of packing their own lunch. You can opt for things like carrots that are package free, celery that are package free, cut them up at home and send them off with some hummus. You can use reusable containers, reusable bags, reusable water bottles. You can buy like the biggest bag of trail mix you can find and then, pr and then portion it out yourself at home instead of buying individual plastic packaged ones. Buy in bulk buy larger quantities versus the smaller ones that are pre-packaged and that's a great way to reduce waste. I've said this in every category but it's obviously very important. Teach your students that it's really important to use what they already have instead of buying new. Reuse those notebooks, reuse those binders, reuse those folders and buy only what they need brand new for the coming school year. Offer to be the carpooler for your neighborhood or just start one up. Obviously no one wants to be the designated carpooler every day but maybe you know you and one or two other families in your area can switch out carpooling every other day and then both of you get to save some gas money both of you are reducing your emissions and this can also be a great way to make friends if you're not already friends with them this is also a great opportunity to make secondhand shopping popular again for school supplies you can find so many school supplies secondhand like brand new too but also back to school outfits i remember every year i would go to justice and um air apostle really dating myself that's where i do my back to school shopping and let me tell you it was fun but like i think it would also have been fun if my mom gave me a hundred bucks and let me loose in a goodwill like I would have gotten so much more clothes too because at Justice you're getting like four shirts for a hundred bucks. But at Goodwill, back in the day when Goodwill was only like two or three dollars for a shirt, you could leave with such a haul if you had a hundred bucks or even less. So you can learn more about fast fashion in this video and why you should not support it. And then I have another video on why you should not be supporting big, big thrift stores like Goodwill. Maybe you make your own choice on that. Rather the nuance of, of supporting big thrift stores. I'll leave that video up there and below as well. But teach them, and maybe it's different now. When I was a kid, thrift shopping was gross and now thrift shopping is cool. So like maybe your teenager, maybe your middle schooler will be into thrift shopping. So try that out this year if you're looking for back to school clothes. If I missed any good tips for zero waste at school, zero waste back to school tips, let us know down below. I'd love to make a part two, if not now, maybe next year. Um, and again, check out my past zero waste school videos. I've got zero waste 
in a dorm. I've got zero waste school supplies. I've got how to live zero waste with roommates. Maybe I should make a video on like how to be zero waste as a kid. Hey, does anybody have kids that would love that video? Does anybody, is anybody a kid watching this video? Let me know. Um, obviously I'm not a kid and I was not zero waste as a kid. I was zero waste ish just cause we grew up pretty frugal. If you want to see that video, let me know. I think that'd be really fun. But again, leave your tips down below. Share with the rest of us. If you know anybody who would benefit from this video, share this video with them. I did break it down into categories, but really anybody can use any of the tips in any category. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll see you then. Until then, though, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye, guys. Three out of five. Let's go. Oh, gosh. How do I start this video? Those are things you're always focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live I'm just gonna start all the way over. Hello, Emma. <laughs> I'm on the ground. OMG, I've never done that before. I think I need to take a break. Oh my gosh. I don't think I can continue. Okay, focus. You know your line.